ultramarines are exemplars of everything it means to be a space marine. Their martial excellence and physical might are tempered by discipline, culture and millennia of accumulated wisdom. We'll be showing you how to paint an ultramarine's terminator quickly and easily and by following this guide you'll be able to get the whole unit painted in no time. If you're new to painting you can check out the Citadel Colour Painting Essentials videos to learn all about it. The paints we've used are on screen now. Remember we're painting in the colours of the ultramarines but feel free to paint in whatever colours you prefer. Any additional equipment we've used is also on screen now. Again, feel free to use whichever brushes you're most comfortable with. And if you don't have mediums, you can use water instead. Now the first thing we need to do is undercoat the model and for this we've used McCrag Blue. This will give us a great head start on getting all of that armour done. Also, you'll need a pot of McCrag Blue to hand as this will help us tidy up any mistakes later on. So once that undercoat's done, we're going to start off by painting the black areas using Abaddon Black. So this is the undersuit and the gun casing. We're using a medium layer brush here because it's small enough to help us get to those tricky areas and it's large enough to allow us to paint a little bit quicker. This is a base paint so we need to thin it down with some water and apply a couple of coats. Doing this avoids clogging up any of that awesome detail we can see on the miniature. If you make any mistakes don't worry just use that McCrag blue, thin it down with some water and use that to tidy up any mistakes. Now for the purposes of this video we're only painting one miniature but you might have a whole unit to paint. If you want to paint them all at once or in small groups, this is called batch painting. And it just means painting more than one miniature at once. When we do this, it's best to work through each stage one at a time on each miniature. So if I'd got a few Terminators to paint, I'd be doing the black on all of them and then moving on to the next stage. Batch painting helps you get into a rhythm and this helps you to finish larger units quicker, getting them on the gaming table in no time. And with that stage done we're going to move on to the white and for this we're going to use Corax white to paint the helmet of the Terminator. It's completely normal for paints to separate in the pot when they've been stood for a while so make sure you give it a good shake before you open it and use it. And again this is a base paint so we do need to thin it down on the palette and apply a few layers. It might take three coats to get full coverage over that blue undercoat. Be as neat as you can around the details we've already painted but don't worry mistakes can always be tidied up. Now we've got those first few base coats down, our Ultramarine's Terminator is really starting to take shape. Next we're going to use Celestra Grey and we'll be using this to paint the Crux Terminatus and the Rocks too. Apply this just like the other base coats, thin it down and apply a couple of layers to get a full coverage. This colour works really well for these areas and we're going to be applying a wash over it later which will make it look really weathered and worn. Now we're just going to use a little bit of wraith bone to pick out any parchment. If you haven't got this you could use Corex white instead. You might find it easier to switch to a small layer brush here as it is quite an intricate area. Again we'll be applying a wash over this shortly and this will help to age it and really tie the whole model together. As this is a light colour going over quite a dark undercoat it will take a few coats so just take your time and build up those layers. Make sure you wait for each one to dry before you apply the next one. Now we're going to use Mephiston Red and we'll be using this to paint the Purity Seal Wax as well as the eye lenses. A small layer brush is really helpful here as these are really intricate areas so this gives us a little bit more control. Make sure to thin your paint down and apply a couple of layers, especially on those eye lenses. It's easier to build up the layers rather than applying a thick coat and clogging up that detail. If you make any mistakes, just thin down that Corex white and go back and correct it. With those eye lenses done, that iconic Terminator helmet is really starting to shape up. And with those base coats done, we're now going to move on to the metallics, starting off with Le Belcher for the silver areas. This is areas like the pipework and the vents at the back, as well as some details on the gun. If you're ever unsure which areas to pick out in certain colours, you can refer to the box art, or feel free to choose for yourself. So this is a metallic paint, but it's also still a base paint, so it will cover really well. So make sure to thin it down with some water and build up those layers just as you've done previously. And with that done, we can move on to that distinctive gold that the Ultramarines are famous for. The next thing we're going to do is use Retributor Armour to paint the chest eagle and the iconography on the weapon too. It can be quite easy to clog up this detail by making your paint too thick, so do make sure to thin it down and apply a few layers. Just make sure it's not too watery. As you can see our model is almost fully painted, we've just got a few more steps to go. So 
So next we're going to add in a slightly different gold just to break up those colours on the miniature. So we're going to use Balthazar gold to pick out some other gold details. You'll notice this gold is much darker but we're going to be applying the same wash over both golds and this will help tie it all together. So we've used this to pick out the rounds in the weapon and also some other details on the miniature. Feel free to refer to the box art or choose for yourself. With that all our base coats are done and we can move on to adding some washers to really tie everything together. So now we're going to apply the first of our shades and this is going to be Agrax Earth Shade. We're going to use this on the gold, the parchment and the red areas. We'll be using this in two ways. First of all we'll thin it down and use this over the parchment. For this we're using one part Lamian Medium to one part Agrax Earth Shade. Remember if you don't have mediums you could use water instead. Thinning it down just means that it's more subtle on the miniature and as we're applying it over that really light wraith bone base coat we don't want the shade to overpower it too much. Then we're going to use it straight from the pot and we'll be applying this onto the gold and the red details. You'll notice it's much stronger in those recesses when we use it straight from the pot rather than when we thinned it down with the medium. This will add much more depth and really tie everything together. If you find that it is pulling too much in any of those recesses Clean off your brush and use that to soak up any excess. Now we're going to use Basilicanum Grey and Contrast Medium and we're going to be using this in several different ways. This will be going over the silver and the grey details as well as acting as a recessed shade for the armour. So to start off with, we'll be thinning it down with one part contrast medium to one part basilicanum grey and this will be going over those silver details. Just like with the Agrax Air Shade, thinning it down means it's more subtle on the miniature and doesn't overpower that base coat. Now you might notice that basilicanum grey is a contrast paint, so it might seem a little unusual that we're using it as a shade. But it's a really versatile paint and when thinned down we can use it in a variety of different ways. When you're applying it, just be careful that it doesn't pull in those recesses too much and as before, you can use a clean brush to soak up any excess. Also, while it's drying, try not to move that paint around at all as this will create texture on the miniature, so make sure to give it plenty of time to dry. Next, we're going to take two parts contrast medium to one part basilicanum grey and we'll be applying this over those grey areas. Again, this is a light base coat, so thinning it down means that we won't accidentally overpower those areas with the contrast paint. And the final way that we're going to use this paint is as a recess shade for the armour. Recess shading means dropping a shade, or in this instance a contrast paint, into the recesses of the armour. Doing this means we avoid the paint settling on any flat surfaces, and instead just get that depth into all those recesses. This avoids us having to go back and relayer over those flat panels to re-establish that base coat. Now this is quite a large stage of this guide, so carefully work your way around the miniature. Take your time, it will be worth it in the end. Using one paint but in a variety of different ways gives us loads of different effects on the model and it's a great way to get the most out of one paint. Now if you do find that you get any basilicanum grey onto those flat panels, don't worry, thin down some macrag blue and just tidy it back up. Now you might notice on the box art that the white helmet actually has a blue recess shade. So for this we're going to thin down Calgar Blue with Lamia Medium. Calgar Blue is a layer paint but we can thin it down with medium to make a glaze. This is similar to the consistency of the shade paints we used earlier and it will act in much the same way. So once you've got the consistency right, just carefully work along the recesses of that helmet and drop that blue into those areas. Again, any mistakes can be tidied up with some Corex white, so just be careful to control the paint while you're working on the miniature. And once that's done, your Ultramarine Terminator is more than ready to strike down enemies of the Emperor. However, if you'd like to see an easy way to take the paint job up a notch, stick with us. Now for the final stage of this guide, we're going to apply an edge highlight to that Terminator armour, and we're going to use Calgar Blue for this. Now it's really up to you how much or how little of this you do. If you're painting a full unit of these miniatures, you might not want to edge highlight every single edge of them. So just pick out the most prominent areas and focus on those. So these are areas like the knee pads and the shoulder pads. The easiest way to edge highlight is to use the edge of the brush. You'll need to thin your paint down so that it glides off the brush easily, but it isn't too watery. Once you've got this, then you can use the edge of your brush to highlight your miniature. 
Just simply run the edge of the brush along any of those hard edges and you'll find that this does the highlight for you. This is a quick and easy way of getting a really bold highlight in no time at all. And if you do make any mistakes, just take that macrag blue and tidy back up. And there we are, your Ultramarine's Terminator is finished, ready to charge onto the battlefield, slaying Xenos filth with courage and honour. You can see that we've applied transfers to our model and we've also based it. We've based it using a technical paint called Armageddon Dust. And if you'd like to learn more about technical paints, you can check out our video all about them. For more tutorials, tips and tricks, you can head to your local Warhammer store where our amazing staff will be more than happy to help. Or head on over to citadelcolor.com. Well, we hope you've enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time. Bye!